Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Well, today is, or tonight is Burns Night, Rabbi Burns. The people all, Scots people all over the world celebrating. And I thought it was only fair that we um, have a Scottish scene. So I've picked this one here. It's um, a small village called Plockton. It's, uh, many would call it the Jewel of the Highlands. It's a small village in the area of Loch Alsh in Wester Ross in the Northwest Highlands. This is the loch coming in here. It's very popular with tourists and um, particularly visitors from abroad. And if you're looking to find out roughly where it is, it's about 80 miles from the Isle of, of Skye on the west coast. Right, you'll see from the picture here that this is quite a dull day, very uh, drich as we would say here in Scotland with these big dark clouds coming over, very misty looking, the water's grey with the grey clouds reflecting down. And um, But I want to try and keep that because um, a lot of the paintings that I've been doing recently have got a nice cobalt blue sky and I wouldn't say fairly simple to paint but this one needs a wee bit more attention trying to create the grey but still having grey clouds hanging over the, the little village here. So what I plan to do is make a sketch and um, then I'll leave the sketch on the paper and um, you can use that to get started um, when you start your painting. You'll be able to stop the video and uh, use the sketch. So the piece of paper that I have is um, 10 inches by 7.5 and, and um, this one's about 8 by 5 so it's in the same proportion uh, which will help when I'm making the sketch. So I'm just going to start and try and get this done as quick as I can. So there will be a line across here for these uh, hills in the distance. Come round like so. There's another one uh, further round. And then we have the the bigger ones, which are slightly nearer, uh, coming into play. This will be a good ex exercise uh, in trying to get um, depth in your painting. I'm just going up here with the craggy areas. Yeah, this will, as I say, we're trying to get that, that and that, and even when I get the cottage and that in, that'll be need to have lighter, slightly darker, slightly darker, and we'll get the depth in the painting. So, now we're coming to the area where the cottage and the house is, and this is just all rough bank side leading down to the water area. The tide looks as if it's out and um, this is just a lot of the grass bank and bits of water areas coming across here. There's another bit there. There's a big bush and a bit of rough ground on the left here so I just want to put that in. Um, I'll draw the boat in a minute. Right, I just want to go across and start to draw this uh, house in so it's a white, super white building it will stand out. And uh, looks as if it's got couple of extensions for rooms up above so to keep that in and a window a door a window like so now this area in the foreground I'm not going to 
copy this in the painting I'll be using a bit of uh, artistic license as we say because um, it's just rough ground and hedges and walls and bushes etc so I'm going to draw these in as, as I see it um, another bit there there's a wall up here nice stone wall and there's another one coming around here which I'm going to use and there's a small tree there again as I say it's just all trees and bushes and shrubbery so um, this will be done uh, very loosely just to get the, this right hand side filled in with all the dark or different greens, darks and lights and here's a there's a big fir tree up here which will be nice to paint, very dark green I'm just sort of highlighting where that will be coming down to about here and there's a little bush there right there's one or two trees round about the, the house winter so um, we'll see I might make them summer trees we'll see when I get to that right um, just one thing left to do is the boat which will be about here so I'm going to use that figure eight um, just to create this shape there's a nice part there can you draw that down there in the foreground? And the boat looks as if it's toppled over a bit. So we need to take that right down there. And right, that should do. So I'll just put another one or two bits of grassy areas here and this is a, a rocky part and I think that will about do so that's the sketch so so first we have to tackle the sky and um, as I said this is a, a very um, dark day just like you see the picture again dull grey skies over the the hills and the mountains in the distance so we have to try and mix up a sort of greyish blue for the sky I don't want a nice summery cobalt blue this is dark grey so I'm going to swing round and let you have a look so what I'm doing is just putting some water in the tree and the palette here first to um, I need to get a a watery grey colour. So I'm going to use cobalt blue. I don't want it too strong. I'm just going to put some more water in there too. And I'm going to put some light red. And there's a nice grey. Now, I'm just going to um, try and paint that in just now. What I'm going to also do is um, just get another wash mixed up here beside it. Slightly darker colour. Stronger to um, put the clouds in at the top the dark clouds hanging over the mountain so I need to have that paint ready when I've finished the, the first wash ok so I've got the big flat brush as you'll see and I'm just going to start at the top and try and get it painted in Right, that looks quite a nice colour. There's a 
nice and light so that should be okay once I put the, um, the darker colour in what I've done there is just added some pure water to get that colour lighter in the distance right there we are so quickly I'm just going to let me dab a bit of paint out and then I'm going to add this um, darker colour for the clouds so here we go I'm just going to try this um, yeah, I think, think that should be okay they're mainly up the top of the sky so I'm just going to keep them up there and that should about do let me drag one or two down right I think that'll that'll be okay once that dries well that sky is drying quite nicely um, but I need it to be dry before I can put these in so I normally prefer to just work my way down paintings but what I'm going to do here is I've still got a big pool of blue left as you can see I'm actually going to use that for the water because the water is a, a grey colour as well by the reflection of the dark clouds above so I'm just going to quickly use this and see if I can put a nice pale colour in for the water quickly It's quite nice, turned out well. Just going to carry on up. Um, there is some bits of water still up through in the bank area here. So I'm just going to fill that in just now. And I can use that later when I put the, the green in. Right, that looks quite good, yeah. So let's just zoom out and have a, a look at the starting to take shape. Um, quite pleased the sky, as I said before, if you get a good sky in a painting, I always tell my students this, get a good sky, you're happy with it, and that's you off and running. You get a sky that's iffy, it's always in your mind. So quite happy with that one. Okay, so the sky is dry and the water's dry, so I'm going to start putting these distant layers of um, hills and mountains in. So I want to get a purpley blue for this one. So I'm going to swing around, let you see this. Uh, what will we do here? Right. I'm going to use cobalt blue and I'm going to use a bit of the colour alizarin crimson if you remember used that before it gives you a, a super purpley colour so I just want to get that round and have a look just testing it on the paper just now and it should be okay so we'll soon find out, I'm just going to paint it in and that is just a touch too dark so I'm just adding water
As you see, what I'm doing there is adding quite a little bit of water. That colour was too strong. And I'm just going to let that dry. So that should be okay. Just going to put a little bit on the left hand side there. Right, I need that to dry now before I can tackle this or this. Okay, so that hill in the distance is dry now, so I'm going to try and paint this one here. So we need a bluish, purpley bluish colour, but slightly darker than this, but not as dark as this one. So I'm going to mix up some, put some ultramarine blue in here, and I'm going to try some of that um, white red colour. And I'll just see if that will do. Right, let me swing that around again. Let me see. Try it on a piece of paper first. And we'll try it. Right, it's just dark enough. Right, that should do. Okay, I'm going to move over to the right hand side now and I want to get these big dark mountains filled in. So again, I need to get it darker than this colour. So, um, you get purpley blues and then blues and then you get brownish blues as we start to come forward. Then you get a bit of brownish green and then you get greens. So, um, what are we going to do here? Alright, let's see, swing this round. Some water, I need quite a lot here. I'm going to cover the whole range, so... Start off with some burnt umber. I'm going to put some ultramarine blue in there. some cobalt blue in. That's better. It's a better colour. Right, there's this bluish brownish colour I've been talking about. Now just want to test this on a piece of paper first. See what it looks like. It's a bit too dark. That's better. Right. So this will be interesting. See how this turns out. Right, so I've got this big dark. I'm just going to start off up here. That's quite a nice colour. I can see the blue coming through. I um, still need it to be blueish. It's in the distance, but it's not um, too close to warrant greens and browns yet. Right. Now, I'm just, this is when it gets tricky. The paint will dry, start to dry quickly, and I need to get it all filled in. But I need it to... Um, 
soften off at the bottom so I'm going to what I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to put some water up there to keep that edge from being hard edged and then as we come down here I'm just going to get a slightly smaller brush as we get down here it's um, not quite as strong colour so I'm just going to mix that in there down now, go over it a bit again, I just don't want any of these hard edges, the paint's drying so quickly, again I've got the heating on, it's quite cold outside, quite frosty here, and um, right, now I just want to get some more water on that bit here and take it along to the water's edge that's starting to look okay um, yeah I'm going to just paint over these trees I think, well it's winter by the looks of it so they won't have the foliage this again with that wash that I've got left this bit here I just want to get it all there's too many lines there as I say that's the paint drying causing that um, but I want to avoid it that's better a very slight yellowish colour just at the bottom here and I'm just going to go for it um, just going to put that in and just blend it in here so hopefully we'll be able to make good use of that Too bad. So I think what I'll do is I'll just let that all dry now and then we can tackle the, the foreground here. Okay so the mountains are, are drying with a whole mixture of colours in there so I'm going to move down to the, the front here, the foreground and the, there's a lot of um, what I would call a dirty green colour you know, the water's out, the tide's out and they've left with all this green in front of the the banks and the hedges and walls so I'm going to just mix up a a mossy green colour with what I'm going to do is that big pool of brownie green colour that I've got brownie blue sorry I'm going to add some yellow to that and yeah that's a super <laughs> okay what colour do we call this um, that'll do nicely it's a mossy green colour mixed up with goodness knows how many other colours so I'm just going to try it here yeah that's okay not too bad so I'm getting quite a lot on my brush here because I want to go 
right across here. Now that is just a touch too strong. So I'm just going to put some water in that. And uh, I'm just going to work my way along here. Right. Round about the boat. Could perhaps just warm it up a bit with some. What I've done here is I've just put a bit um, um, Windsor blue colour in to brighten it up a bit. Don't want it too dark and dull. Right, so I'm just working me across here. There's some bits, pools of water, so I don't want to paint over it all. So I'm carefully working my way around, leaving these blue areas that I put in before when I was doing the water. That's quite nice. Right, that's okay. So what I'm going to do is carry on um, up to the side of the bank here. I'm just going to keep using that colour. Right, get some more on the brush and here we go. Just protecting the water again in bits. This water is dry now so it's ideal to get these super sharp bits in the, the grassy, the bank area going right along towards the, the house. So I'm just going to finish this bit here, coming up here, and I think that will about do. Um, I don't really know what's going to go in the rest of this area. I haven't decided that yet, but that's um, that's a good part done there. Right, just going to leave that. Just while I've got some of that green mixed up, there's this bushy area here on the left. I just want to fill that in with this green. I'll put a bit of detail in at the end once we start um, adding all the detail, but I'm just using up the paint. And uh, that'll do fine. Right, there's that bush in. Good, that's that finished. Now that the, um, the mountains and the sea and the foreground here, it's all dry. So what I want to do now is try and um, add something in here. Um, now I'm not going to try and copy every single bit that's in the painting. There seems to be some walls separating this part here. That looks like a, a wall and then a hedge. So I'm just going to mix up some greens and some browns for the wall and the grass and paint it in. So I'll just let you see some of the colours I'm going to use. Um, stick to the yellow, cadmium yellow, and a bit of the ones are blue will give me the green. And just going to use some burnt umber and use a bit of Payne's grey just to. Darken it a bit, that'll do. Right, so 
let's swing round and get into the the grassy area. It's like as if it's um, plots of land separated by the walls. So I'm just going to put some greenery in here. as well and that'll do us just now right so I'm going to put some of that brown in now and um, I think there's a put a wall up here Now I'm not um, painting it all in, I want to keep some of that white bits, which is good for stones later on, you can add some detail. And there's a bit over here. I've got um, a new brush here, I found it in my cupboard, <laughs> I've had it for quite a while, I just haven't used it much, it's a sable brush, it's got a super point on it, um, so I was just trying it out here, and uh, finish this wall here. And then I'll put some darker green, there's a hedge there, so I'm just mixing up a bit of darker green. I think there's a sort of hedge thing about here, around the, the cottage. And I'm just going to take it up there. Right, that's quite nice. Now there's a lot of uh, trees and different type shapes of bushes and stuff, so I'm just going to mix up a green, cadmium yellow, and I'm just going to drop some in, put one or two in a bit there. So that's um, starting to look quite nice. I'm going to um, swing round to here, this left hand corner, because um, that bush needs to get some darker colour in there. So while I've got this green, I'm just going to mix some bits up and Drop them in. Right. I'm just going to get some water and soften some of these bits off. I always feel that that helps. It's nice when the colours come together. Just add a little darker bits. Right, that's okay. Now, just before we finish over here, um, we add some detail along the bank area, just some bits to suggest this is where the 
the grass meets the, the stony area of the water, the dry bank area, and it's going to darken that as well. Some bits there. to look quite nice. Nice sharp point that brush has got. Leave some super marks. Um, just going to darken that bush a bit. Same with that one. The light's coming from this side, what light there is. So we'll darken this up as well. Right. This one little bit, that wall here, I just want to give it a bit of definition. That's fine. Right. Okay, so what do we want to do now? I want to try and do the house, I think. Yeah, let's get a bit of nice grey colour. The light, as I say, is coming this way, so this will be slightly darker. A nice um, pale grey. Put that in just now and let it dry. That'll be fine. Right. Now, two or three things we could do. We could tackle the boat um, around here. Yeah, I think I'll tackle the boat. Um, now, the boat in the picture, just let you see this again. Um, the boat is blue, as you see. I'm going to make it red, just for this to change the scene a bit. So, it's a nice red colour. Get some of this cadmium red that I don't use very much. Just going to drop this in. And we'll see what, what it turns out like. This is the beauty of uh, being an artist um, as opposed to a photographer. A photographer takes the picture and they've got what's in front of them. You're the artist, you can chop and change whatever you want about uh, your painting. Yeah, it's quite nice. I'll darken it up in bits after that's dry. Right. We like that. Just give it a bit more strength. Right, we'll just let that dry for a minute. Now, there's two or three other things that I just want to do before I tackle this big, if you remember there was a big um, fir tree in the, the right hand side here, but I just want to get that um, boat finished and I also want to, um, there's a tree here and it's like a, it's in the winter in the picture but I'm going to make it, um, it's got some foliage on it so I'm just going to mix up a green again 
just using some of this and we'll let's see yellow I'm using a bit of yellow ochre this time a bit of Windsor blue and there's a, a nice green so I'm going to put that in just at the side of the the house just probably about here yeah that'll do so you'll notice I'm painting the um, the greenery in first um, just going to put that there and then I'll um, add the the trunks and bits of branches I'll do that's quite nice quite like that right um, while I've got this green here I'm just going to add some bits to there to darken these bushes up on the left hand side add a little bit darker on there as well just to just slightly darker which um, helps right that's okay now I've got this green left over I kind of like when we've got puddles of green left we can we can use them to get some effect I'm going to put one or two bits here just to kind of balance the bits that seem to be on their own it's quite bushy over there right so and I'm just going to drag some bits across here as well just to take away that flatness there this is something you'll learn over the years just go for it Right, this is um, looking a lot better now, quite pleased with this. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is um, finish the cottage off, let's get that done. So it's a sort of grey roof. Uh, with a little two um, like extensions up above bedrooms, so I'm just going to watch carefully and make sure I don't paint over them. Same here. And a bit at the end. Windows, right. Now, I'm just going to check that to see if that's dry. Hmm, still a bit wet. What I was going to do there was put the um, the door and the, the windows in, but I better just leave that a touch. What I can do just while I'm waiting, I'm just going to put some um, trunks in for these trees. There we go, that'll do. Right, that's that finished. Now, um, I think we may as well tackle this big tree on the right hand side. Well, I've mixed up a, a big green here as you can see. There was a bit of yellow ochre, some cadmium yellow Winds of blue and a little touch of brown flung in. I was looking for this mossy colour. Right. So now I'm going to just, I'm just going to zoom out a touch because this um, tree goes up above the 
the mountains on the right hand side. So I've got the rigger brush out to start with. It's a very fine point that we need and it's up here. Just going to let you see this and then I'll gradually just work my way down with the leaf areas getting bigger and I'll maybe just swap brushes just to that's a thicker as we get to the bottom. Right, okay, so big deep breath now. This could make or break the painting here. Right, so I'm going to start here with a just a little point and um, starting to work my way down. I'm just going to swap brushes, got another nice sable pointed brush here. Um, just wanted the branches to be slightly thicker. And uh, starts to get darker here now. As we get to the to the bottom, so it's starting to spread out in there, and it's quite quite a big tree. This so uh, the branches will be bigger at the base, and it's going to cover that whole area in there. So I'm just going to finish just now with that colour. Um, I'm going to add a, a dark to give it a bit of detail. So what I'm going to do is just add darker colours. The winds are blue, and a bit of the brown. And there we go, we get a nice, thick, strong, dark colour that we need. I'm going to turn that back, have a look. And we want this to be on the, mainly on the left hand side. Right, it's starting to take shape. Put one or two here just to suggest the the leafy parts. Yeah, I think that'll do. Just gonna put one or two bits of tufty bits under the tree in the shade. Add some water and just let that disappear. Right, so there we have the fir tree. Let's zoom out and have a look at this. Starting to take shape now, we're almost there. Just got a bit of the boat to do, tidy up this bit here, and that will be it. Right. Now I've just added a bit of um, dark red to this the front of this boat which is in the shade a bit because what I want to do is start um, painting in the lines for the, the side of the boat so I'm just going to start that I'm going to take one Right down here, another one, another one. Right. And 
Just going to use a bit of browny grey colour too and paint a, some detail in the boat in the background and then side. So I'm just going to put one or two little bits. Something in there, a seat to the front of the boat. Now, yeah, that'll do, that's fine. So, finally getting to the end, uh, what I'm going to do now is just kind of tidy this bit up in the front. Um, and what I'm doing is, I'm just going to slightly add a little bit of detail around the pool where the water is, just to give it a bit of uh, definition. Got the rigger brush again here. Uh, just some of these bits. And what I'm going to do is quickly just kind of soften these off a bit. This is the beauty of watercolour. You just get water and let the, the water do the work. Right. Um, I might try and put one or two rocks in just to break it up a bit, give it a bit of a sort of rough feeling. So I'm just adding some rocks here in the foreground. Put one or two over here. Smaller ones. Put one there. And I'll put one or two here, slightly bigger. And one there, I think that'll do. Right, put some water again, just to soften the, the right hand side. So you get a slightly lighter colour on the right. And you keep the the dark that you want to keep on the left. Right, that's about it. Um, I'll do some splattering. You know, recall this in some of the snow scenes. Basically, just a pool of water, watery colour and get your brush and just flick it to get some small it's not <laughs> that wash that I made there is not watery enough there we go Tell you what, you have to watch though when you're doing this, you'll see that some of that's went onto the water. You don't want that, so I'm going to put a sheet of paper over there, my scrap sheet, and um, that's better. You can do it um, that way as well with a brush. hit against the, the brush and you get a nice splattering effect. Now the last thing, um, I want to try and add some marks across there just as if the winds disturbed that water. And this is the 
broken edge technique and basically I get just going to let you see I've got a small pool of blue up in the corner there and I'm going to try and add some broken strokes right across here this again is um, could make or break your painting but let's go for it I'm going to add one in there right that's okay that's turned out right I think that's about it last thing just going to put a a rope here and the boat keep it tied down and just a little bit more detail on that bit of the boat there right that'll do Brushes down, finished.